Hello, sports fans and baseball fans. Uh, apparently, a trending thing right now is to talk about ESPN's top 100 Major League Baseball players of all time. So, I'm doing that because I'm Sportsman Z. Now, I want to preface this by saying I really don't care what ESPN thinks are the top 100 players of all time in Major League Baseball. And I also want to preface this list by saying they got most of them right. I mean, I don't know if there's anybody that's not on this list that you know of, that you think should be on there. Yeah, there's probably two or three guys maybe that you could knock off the list but um, by and large this is a pretty solid list I mean I gotta say and again I'm not really a big personally I don't really care what they think the top 100 players are and also you gotta remember you're talking about a sport that started way back in the late 1800s 1871 i think or something was like the very first baseball season so that's a lot of seasons to narrow a list down to 100 guys you know so um i'm sure you could probably go back and find a guy or two or three that aren't on this list that maybe should be long on the list. Now, um, ESPN's criteria for coming up with this list was their career war. And again, war is something that's a computation that was, you know, developed by Bill James or the, you know, the um, analytics community. And I'm not saying that war isn't a valid measure of anything I mean it is widely accepted now so maybe it does a good measurement of a player's worth to their team and their worth as a player throughout the history of baseball but I'm just saying I don't know if we really know that for a fact um, their Hall of Fame entry there are players on this list that are not in the Hall of Fame but it's basically their Hall of Fame status that was considered. But you're going to see there are players that are not in the Hall of Fame and may never get there that are on this list. Um, their peak performance. And they also considered their contribution to the game. And, uh, you know, there's a couple of notable ones I'll point out as we come to them. I'm going to try to make this quick. I, you know, there's a hundred guys to go over. I'm not going to do any kind of in-depth analysis on them. So don't worry about that. Um, I'm going to say the top, um, the top five guys they nailed. I'm going to say that, and I'm going to go over that. I'm going to start at number one because, you know, I'm just going to. I know usually a list like this, you start at 100 and you work your way back to one. But that's if I'm doing it over, you know, a series of a few days. And I'm not doing that. I'm just giving you the list. So the top five, I think they nailed. You got number one, Babe Ruth. Shocker. Uh, number two, Willie Mays. Now, there's been some question, should Willie Mays really be above Ruth? Um, I guess you could make that argument. I mean, Ruth has, you know, Ruth is like Notre Dame in football. He's got the, uh, you know, he's got the tradition, you know. So nobody's going to take that away from him. But, I, you know, I, I would argue you maybe could put Willie Mays above Ruth. But he was number two, Willie Mays was. Number three, you got Hank Aaron, Hammer and Hank. Number four, you got Ty Cobb, Tyrus Cobb. The Georgia Peach. And then at number five, you got Ted Williams, the splendid splinter. So yeah, the number, the top five guys, I really don't have any issue with. Maybe you could move them, interchange them. And really, they could be interchanged. They're all, they were super great players. 
Uh, six through ten, you've got Lou Gehrig, Mickey Mantle, Barry Bonds, Walter Johnson, the big train, Stan, the man, Musial. Again, don't have too much problem with that. I don't know. You could probably interchange them if you wanted to. Again, all great players. I know that, you know, ESPN probably ranked them by war. But if you're sitting at home and you're thinking, man, Stan Musial, I think, was probably better than Walter Johnson. Who's to say you're wrong? Um, 11 through 15, you got Pedro Martinez, Honus Wagner, Ken Griffey Jr., um, Greg Maddox, and Mike Trout. Now, the only thing I'm going to say about Mike Trout is he's coming in at number 15 and he's still going. And he's still going strong. I mean, I think Mike Trout has some really good years left in the tank. Let's not say Mike Trout is washed up or done. But he's number 15 now. And that's pretty good. That's, I mean, you're going up against the history of baseball, everybody, and you're not even done playing yet. Um, 16 through 20, we have Joe DiMaggio. And then we have Roger Clemens. There you go. Roger Clemens, not in the Hall of Fame, suspected of uh, PED use. You know, will he ever get to the Hall of Fame? But yes, I, I think he belongs on this list. If you're going to talk, if you're just talking about the best players of all time, Roger Clemens belongs on this list. Now, I don't know if he really belongs up as high as number 17, but it's possible. Um, Mike Schmidt. Frank Robinson and Rogers Hornsby. Now, Rogers Hornsby, that dude, would consistently hit over 360. Sometimes he hit 400. And he wasn't even breaking a sweat. So, yeah, I mean, you know, I don't have a problem with this. Um, like I said, Roger Clemens, not Hall of Fame, but he definitely belonged on this list. I don't know if quite that high, but it's possible. It is very possible. Uh, Mike Schmidt. Michael Jack Schmidt, one of the greatest third basemen of all time, if not the greatest base, third baseman of all time. Uh, 21 through 25, you got Cy Young. I mean, the dude has an award named after him. So, yeah. I mean, I guess he belonged on this list somewhere. And certainly, uh, he's the all-time leader in wins for a pitcher, which, as we've seen in recent years, isn't all it's cracked up to be. Um, as it was, you know, back in the day when I was a kid growing up, wins was everything. Wins was the thing. Now we're seeing that it's really team dependent, which it is. But still, he was good. I'm saying the guy was good. I mean, he was, you know, he had mangled fingers that made him throw a great curveball. Uh, Tom Seaver. Now, 23 is Ricky Henderson. I don't know if Ricky Henderson really should be this high. Um, I'm going to say Ricky Henderson should be on the list of the top 100. I don't know if he should be 23. I don't think I'd have Ricky Henderson at 23. There's deserving guys that are were better than Ricky Henderson. I mean, if you're making a team, if you're making a 25-man team from every player that existed in baseball, is Ricky Henderson going to be on your team? He ain't going to be on mine. So, uh, number 24 is Randy Johnson. Randy Johnson, the uh, the other big train. He was a big train, too. Not the Express. The Express is later. But the big train, but Randy Johnson. The big unit. That's what he was. He was the big unit. They had to say something. They had to call him a big something. Um, but, yeah, Randy Johnson was really good really good and uh, he was integral in the uh, Diamondbacks winning the World Series uh, he could throw smoke yeah he was good again kind of like Henderson I don't know if he really should be number 24 that's pretty high you're in the top quarter of the top 100 players of all time I don't know but he should be on the list for sure 25 is Christy Mathewson. I love Christy Mathewson. I'm a big Christy Mathewson fan. So, yeah, I'll say Christy Mathewson is good right there. Now you got 26 through 30. 26 through 30 is A-Rod. A-Rod is one of them. Now, he just started on the uh, Hall of Fame ballot, so we don't know if he's ever going to make the Hall of Fame. 
Hopefully he does. He should, but then again, I think Barry Bonds and Clemens should too. Uh, Roberto Clemente. Roberto Clemente. And he died when he still had some good years left in the tank that, um, you know, I mean, I think 27 is good for him, even if not based on the statistics that he actually had, but the fact that had he played a few more years, which he could have if he hadn't um, died in a plane crash, who knows? Derek Jeter is number 28. I don't know. I mean, Derek Jeter was a very good player. He was a solid player. I even will say, yes, he should be in the Hall of Fame. But I don't know that he's the 28th all-time player. Again, if I'm making a baseball team and I can pick from all players who ever played Major League Baseball and I can put a 40-man roster together, you got Derek Jeter on 28? No. He's not making my team. Not a 40-man roster. Now, you go beyond that, sure. Um, Johnny Bench at 29 and Albert Pujols at 30. Now, of course, Albert Pujols is still playing and still adding to his statistics, but at a very slow rate now. And maybe he's retired, I don't know, but um, he's going to retire soon. But he is still playing, technically. Now, number 31, no. Number 31 is Mario R Rivera, 31 through 35. Mariano Rivera. I'm not going to put Mariano Rivera on my top. 100 players of all time. I don't know. I would look around. I would grab somebody, maybe John Montgomery Ward. I would put on there above Mariano Rivera. <laughs> I'm not putting a relief pitcher on the top 100 players of all time. I don't care who the relief pitcher is. I don't care what his name is. I don't care who you think he is. I'm not putting Goose Gossage on this list. I'm not putting Suter on this list. So uh, Mariano Rivera, I don't think belongs. Uh, Sandy Koufax at 32. 33 is Bob Gibson. Big fan of Bob Gibson's. 34 is Pete Rose. Pete Rose, again, may never make the Hall of Fame, but he's the all-time hit leader. And, uh, yeah, he should be on this list. And then uh, you got Josh Gibson after him. Josh Gibson. Negro Leagues. I was very happy to see them put some Negro Leaguers on here, but here's the thing. They only put two Negro Leaguers on, and we'll get to the other one a little later. But if you're doing the top 100 players of all time, and you're putting Josh Gibson and the other guy that we're going to get to, but that's the only two, so you're telling me that in the top 100 players of all time, there was only two, two Negro Leaguers that belong on that list. I don't know. It seems kind of not right to me. Probably incorrect. But again, one of the challenges you have with putting Negro Leaguers on the list is uh, you don't really, you like Negro League statistics were not really a thing. They weren't really that accurate. Um, so we don't really know you know, like it's speculative. Josh Gibson's home run total is speculative. We don't really know how many home runs he hit. We know he hit a lot. And I'm not arguing that he doesn't belong on the list, but I'm saying you're only going to put two on the list in the top 100. I mean, you know, I would put maybe another Negro leaguer in place of Mariano Rivera, you know? And again, if you don't like that, I really don't care. If you're a Yankees fan and you don't like what I said about Jeter, you don't like what I said about Mariano Rivera, leave it in the comments. So, uh, and then uh, 36 through 40 is Tris Speaker and um, then Joe Morgan, Joe Morgan from the Big Red Machine, uh, Jackie Robinson, Yogi Berra, Jimmy Fox. Jimmy Double X Fox. So again, I don't have a problem with those guys. I don't know if I would move Jackie Robinson up a little um, further. And technically, I think technically you could say Jackie Robinson was also a Negro Leaguer. So there's three Negro Leaguers on here. In fact, actually, there's there's more because I think you know uh, we're going to run into a couple of guys that played in the major leagues um, later also that were 
in the Negro Leagues. So, um, but I'm talking about guys that were just Negro Leaguers, never made it to the Major Leagues. You're only saying two guys? I don't know. Uh, so 41 to 45, you got Satchel Page. You got Nolan Ryan Noli, the big train. He's the big train. Uh, he's at 42. I guess I would say, yeah, you know. I mean, because the 41 guys above, I mean, I would certainly put him ahead of Mariano Rivera. But then again, I wouldn't even put Mariano Rivera on the list. I would probably even put him above Derek Jeter. But, yeah, I mean, he's right in this kind of territory, I would think, yes. Then George Brett, yeah, Tony Gwynn, Tony Gwynn, love Tony Gwynn. Wade Boggs, Wade Boggs was awesome. Yeah, all these guys belong. Now, 46 to 50, got Ichiro. I'm not even going to say his last name, just Ichiro. You know who I'm talking about. Um, and certainly if you combine his American statistics with his uh, Japanese statistics, boy, he would be higher than 46, let's just say that. Uh, 47 is Warren Spahn, 48 is Nap LaJoy, 49 is Frank Thomas, Big Frank, the Big Hurt. A lot of bigs on this list, the Big Train, the Big Unit, the Big Hurt, the Big Express. All right, no, I don't know. No. Um, and then uh, you got Bob Feller at number 50. Bob Feller, awesome guy. Now, 51, now we're getting into the second half of the 100. You got Ernie Banks, Clayton Kershaw, who is still playing at 52. Again, and he's probably got a little bit of good gas left in the tank. Now, Oscar Charleston is number 53. He is the second Negro Leaguer, in addition to Josh Gibson. And again, are we to believe that Oscar Charleston and Josh Gibson were the only two guys that played only in the Negro Leagues that were good enough to crack this hundred? I don't know because we don't really have really good statistics, but I have to kind of believe that there was at least, you know, a couple of other guys that probably should have been on the list. Lefty Groves at 54 and Reggie, Reggie Jackson, the stick that stirs the drink. He's at 55. 56, you got Dave Winfield. Really? All right, maybe, maybe. I don't, Dave Winfield. If I could think of some other guys like John Montgomery Ward. I really love John Montgomery Ward. Go look him up in the baseball encyclopedia before you laugh. But uh, then you got Pete Alexander, 58. You got Steve Carlton, lefty, just his nickname. He just goes by lefty. Uh, Miguel Cabrera, again, still playing, but kind of like poo holes. He's not going to add to his statistics at any real quick rate from now on. Uh, and then 60 is Whitey Ford. 61, you got Carl Yastrzemski. Yes, Boston fans loving it. Mel Ott at 62. 63 is David Ortiz, who just got voted into the Hall of Fame. So he's in. 64 is Eddie Matthews. 65 is Max Scherzer. He is still pitching, and he still probably has... has whoa. The light just went down. He's probably still got some good years left. Maybe. Who knows? 66 is Cal Ripken Jr. Now, I don't, you know, 66. Again, it's hard for me to say because who are the guys that aren't making this list? But um, anyway, should Cal Ripken be a little higher? I mean, he saved baseball one year after a strike. And by the way, after this lockout, we're going to need another Cal Ripken, you know. And do we have one? I don't know. Uh, 67 is Brooks Robinson. 68 is Manny, Manny Ramirez. And then 69 is Ozzie the Wizard, Smith. Great shortstop. One of maybe the greatest defensive shortstop of all time. Maybe. Um, oh, yeah, Archie Vaughn. How about Archie Vaughn? He's not on this list. Go look him up. Don't laugh until you look these guys up that I'm coming up with, that I'm pulling out of my butt. Number 70 is Harmon Killebrew. I would say Harmon Killebrew. Yeah, fine. 
Uh, 71 is Al Kaline, Big Al. 72 is Justin Verlander. And get inside? I hope so. Mr. Johnson, any words of wisdom? Uh, I'm here for the lobster. Randy? Justin Verlander, again? Okay, so yeah, Justin Verlander, I mean, he's got a hot wife. That really would rank him pretty high on the list in my book. Um, then you got Willie McCovey, Juan Marichal, and Rod Carew at 75. Rod Carew. Really good player. 76, you got Cap Anson. All right, I mean, his personally, as a person, it, you know, he's kind of questionable. But as a baseball player on the diamond, he was good. Vlad Guerrero Sr. might be joined by his son someday. We don't know. Chipper Jones, 78. 79 is Hank Greenberg. And 80 is Robin Yount of Milwaukee Brewer fame. Number 81 is Mike Piazza. 82 is Eddie Collins, second baseman for my White Sox. Loved Eddie Collins. Uh, 83 is Roy Campanella. Again, Roy Campanella was in a, a, an automobile accident that ended his career. Who knows if he keeps going, but you're already putting him on the list at 83, and then maybe he could have been a little higher if he hadn't been in that automobile accident that crippled him. So you'd never know. Uh, Paul Molitor, and then 85 is Jim Palmer. Everybody loves Jim Palmer. Yeah. So... Um, 86, you got Roberto Alomar, 87, Carlton Fisk, yes, Carlton Fisk, definitely belongs, 88, now 88 is Willie Stargell, I have some issues with Willie Stargell, I don't think Willie Stargell, if I'm thinking top 100 players of all time, Willie Stargell ain't on the list, I don't know what my list would have been, but it probably would have excluded Willie Stargell. Um, Joe Jackson, Shoeless Joe Jackson at 89. Again, probably will not ever get into the Hall of Fame. Should be there, but he definitely should be on this list. In fact, Joe Jackson really should be higher than this. I mean, he was like second or third, I think, all time in hits. I think. You can go check me on that and leave it in the comments, but... Joe Jackson really should be a lot higher than 89. He should be a lot higher than 89. In fact, I would switch him and maybe Ricky Henderson. Uh, then you got Ryan Sandberg, Roy Halladay. Again, Roy Halladay. Now, Roy Halladay, again, he died in a plane crash. There's, it's, it seems to be a common theme with these guys. Um, but if he hadn't died in a plane crash... He probably had a few more years he could have pitched. Maybe would have gotten him on this, like solidly on this list. Maybe even higher on the list than 91. So I'm going to say, yeah, I don't have a problem with him being there. Because um, you could probably project him out that he would have been there. 92 is John Smoltz. 93 is Yvonne Rodriguez. I loved Yvonne Rodriguez. 94 is Bryce Harper. Again, now I know Bryce, now see, Bryce Harper is young, and he's still got a lot of years left. He's got a lot in the tank. So, um, I don't know if right now, right this second, right now, he would be in the top 100. But, I could definitely see Bryce Harper by the end of his career being in the top 100. But, he's had some years where he's hit like 260 with a lot of walks. And home runs, 20, 30 home runs, but, you know, I'm just saying, I'm just putting it out there. Duke Snyder at 95, Charlie Garinger at 96, 97 is Adrian Beltre. Again, one of the best all-time third basemen, I think. Then you got Jim Tomei at number 98. I'm not going to complain about Jim Tomei. Then you got Phil Necro. Phil Necro, again, I don't know really if Phil Necro would be in the top 100. I might replace him with John Montgomery Ward. Seriously, go look him up. Um, and then Barry Larkin is number 100. So that's your list. Again, 
basically, like I said, I don't have a problem with the list. I think it's pretty good. Um, I don't have too much heartburn with it. Just like if you're going to put Negro Leaguers on there, there's got to be a couple of other me Negro Leaguers. Um, and some of these guys, I don't know. You know, some of these guys are questionable. Some of the guys are still playing. But by and large, I don't have a problem with it. But leave your comments below. Go look up John Montgomery Ward and Archie Vaughn. And, but right now, that's going to be it for me. Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, signing off with the Top 100.